Eric, you guys, I guess, cut it to two there and crowds into it, and then they hit like three threes and 50 seconds. You know, those big freshmen, you don't actually expect it. What did you think of that and how impressive was that they were able to do that? And it wasn't obviously a good stretch for you guys. Yeah, I thought, I thought Brandon Miller was uh, phenomenal in the second half. I thought the first half we did a great job of executing a defensive game plan. We went under twice on him. And uh, he hit two big threes. I mean, that's you know that's what you need great players to do that are on your roster. And uh, he stepped up when the game was in the balance. Um, you know, I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a team that's playing with great confidence. They're fourth in the country. They won at Houston. Um, I, I don't. I can't recall a home game that I've ever coached in that, are, that an opposing team had 36 free throws attempted. Um, you know, I know they had talked about all of our free throws last year, and and this year we're at home and it happened. So, um, and I, I, you know, I don't know if I've seen a foul of point five seconds either, but it, it, but it is what it is. Alabama deserved to win. Uh, they went through that stretch that was way too much for us to overcome based on our lack of shooting and our lack of uh, stretching the floor out. Uh, I mean, we take ten three balls attempted to their twenty, so they took twice as many threes as us and we only go to the line 23 times so I don't know how that's I, I, I don't understand that uh, if we were taking a lot of three-point shots I would understand it um, but we got to take better care of the ball too I mean we didn't shoot the ball well and we had 15 turnovers um, and gave up nine threes so you add those factors in and you're not going to win many basketball games and it's hard to win right now when, when you're not making threes which you know we're I don't know if we will. Um, and then our free throw percentage uh, has got to improve as well. And then you had a couple of turnovers in that stretch when they hit all those threes, too. That just obviously added to it. Yeah, I think that their threes tomorrow, I mean, I, from an effort standpoint and playing hard, I mean, that's a really good rebounding team. You know, as a coach, you know, the first thing you want is, you know, is your team playing hard? And I do think this team is playing hard. Um, but we're offensively challenged, um, and 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 that and that's that's a fact. That's not a that's not an opinion. Um, and there'd be a lot of other teams offensively challenged too if if uh, two players that you built your roster around aren't here. Um, we're not, the, but nobody nobody cares. And there's and there's other injuries throughout athletics and all different sports and professional ranks and college ranks. And right now. Um, we're still trying to figure out who we are. You know, we changed the starting lineup tonight. I thought it worked out great for us in the second half. Uh, we changed the starting lineup in the second half. I thought it worked well the first uh, segment. Um, and then, like you said, Bob, they hit those threes. And if we're not going to match them threes and we're not going to get to the foul line, then you're going you're gonna to see what, what happened tonight. Jalen Graham obviously had probably his best game of the year so far. Just what did you think of him, and what was different for him about this game? Well, he played really good offensively. He gave up the three in the right corner to Clowney, um, which which was I thought changed the complexion of the game. Uh, I think that was when we were maybe a possession away. Um, offensively, I thought Jalen was awesome. I mean, I thought that uh, he took good shots. He's a good passer. You saw his ball handling. Um, we just got to continue to work defensively because because at Clowney three we were switching pick and rolls, and so there was no reason to really help. Um, but that's one play, and and uh, certainly Jalen was a was a huge bright spot for us offensively. You touched on this a little bit, but you went with the bigger lineup and started Mikel. Just what did you think of his night, and how did you think that particular move worked out for you? Yeah, I thought it worked out well. They have a really big front line. And so that was a little bit of the reason what we'll do at Vanderbilt. I have no idea right now. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, that I'm still, you know, trying to, trying to solve and, and search. Um, if there's something there to, to try to figure out, we're, we're trying. Coach, nine turnovers tonight between Anthony Black and, and Ricky Council. I, I'm sure that's probably too many for your backcourt. Did you see a common theme there, and, and how do they get those trimmed down moving forward? Work on ball handling drills. I mean, we're in the middle of the season. So, you know, I mean, obviously, nine turnovers between the two, and you're at home. And then, 
we got to go on the road. And, uh, I mean, we, got, we still got to go at Alabama. I mean, we just played in front of 20,000 people here. So, um, you know, how we claw out of this is, is uh, we have a much more uphill battle than we did the last two years. I know that for sure. I mean, the much, much more uphill battle. There's no doubt about it. And tonight against an Alabama team that likes to play fast and get up and down the floor, the, the turnovers that were live ball seemed to prove pretty costly tonight. Yeah, I mean, again, halftime, tied. Uh, you know, some of the stuff that happened, uh, free throws attempted at one point in the game, and then and then they got hot. That's that's really what, you know, that's that's what happened in the game. Um, again, uh, never seen a team take twenty threes and and they're on the road and go to the line thirty six times. That that's part of the outcome. But their, their star player stepped up, and he took the game over. And he rose over us and shot uh, the ball from three. Uh, and then you look at what Sears did from the foul line, uh, going 10 of 10. And then you look at our, uh, we only made 15 free throws, and their point guard made 10. So. Mil uh, you mentioned Miller hit those two threes, but in the first half he didn't take a shot. What did you think of the job Devo was, was doing on him? Yeah, first half was incredible. Uh, absolutely as good as you could play a guy. And then in the second half, not so good. We went under, uh, like I said, back-to-back -back dribble handoffs. We didn't go under one time in the first half. Um, and, and I thought Miller came out with a different mindset. Maybe he didn't know we were going to guard him with a – with a smaller player, I don't know, but but uh, he was able to adjust his game or his mindset or uh, Coach Oates called some. I don't know, but but he came out and was a different basketball player for sure. And we didn't execute the game plan like we were supposed to in the second half. I mean, it, we never went over under one DHO handoff in the in the first half, not one. We went over every single one of them. I think there were 28 combined fouls and 37 FTAs in the first half. How tough is that to maybe get into a flow of things whenever you know that kind of thing happens? Well, there was no flow in the first, and then when it was when it was uh, when the outcome was like that at halftime, we talked about continuing. We went to the foul line five times in the second half in a really physical game. So, you know, but it's kind of, it's you know it's been that way since league started. So we we got to try to play through it. Eric, did you see any change in your, your team's three-point defense from first half to second half, or is it you credit Alabama Yeah, I mean, I just, I just mentioned, Scotty, we went under two DHOs. So that's – I don't know how many they made. I think they – what did they make, six? Seven, yeah. So if they go seven of ten, Miller probably made what? Three of them? Four of them? He's six of seven in the second half. So, <laughs> I mean, I know, we, I know we went under at least two – dribble handoffs and our bigs didn't do a good enough job tracking with their high hands um i mean look he's a lottery pick like he <laughs> he's he's an incredible basketball player uh especially offensively and he look what look at his numbers i mean you know i mean two or two from three six or seven from the foul line 14 points all in the second half unless you guys had the Turnover battles going your way at the end of non-conference. I think three straight games, plus 62 and points off. It's gone almost completely opposite in, in the SEC play every game. And I know you've talked a little bit about turnovers. What's different then? I know the level of competition's gone up night game and game, but what what's really changed to change that narrative? Yeah, I mean to be honest with you, Kevin, I'm I'm uh, I'm extremely disappointed in our lack of steals. But I haven't changed the game plan or the scheme. Um, you get into conference play, and I do think people take better care of the basketball. Um, like I said, we're in a, we're you know we can talk about the last two years. We are in a completely and utterly different state, um, and in 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 a way more uphill battle than 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 we've been since I've been here. To be quite honest. Also, the game plan to limit three, your guys driving deep and getting some good dishes for close range shots. What did you think about Well, we got to get close range shots, but sorry to interrupt. No, no, that's okay. But what did you think about some of the creativity or timing uh, as guys came open to finish? Yeah, I thought we made some good – I mean, we had nine assists. We probably, probably need more than that. But if you're not making shots, it's kind of hard to have a lot of assists. But I do think we 
made some really good dump off passes around the rim when they came over it. And, and, you know, that was part of some of the things we talked about. Um, they have two great shot blockers in 15, Clowney, and, and, uh, and 14 is, is, it does a really good job blocking shots. And I thought we did a good job of attacking his body and getting him in some foul trouble. Obviously, a coaching track record of turning things around. Um, when you say it's a bit bigger uphill than last year's, is it because of the injuries, or why is it why is it a bigger uphill? Yeah, I mean, battle? I think we've had injuries in the past, and and uh, you know, Smith got back right away. I think he missed five games, and and uh, meaning Justin, um, you know, and and Isaiah missed a, a stretch, and we struggled when both those guys were out, and so. Uh, you know, but I thought when Isaiah came back, we you know we changed things quickly, and certainly uh, Justin's first game back, we we struggled at Alabama, but I thought we were able to gain some momentum. Um, I mean, just the the the, the scoring and the shooting numbers. I mean, we're we're missing, um, and I'm I, I want to be perfectly clear. I'm there's no excuse. Like again, I've been been around the game way too long that their injuries are part of the game. But we're missing two guys that, that we've had projected to play right around, you know, 60 minutes for us. And so um, we've got to do, we've got to keep searching and try to figure it out.